What's going on out here? I have no idea. You have no idea? Yeah. I'm trying to hold lines in, you know? Trying to reassemble? Oh, I got you really close and zoomed in. Yeah. Putting cross members. So what is that? That's the outside of the cross member? Yeah. So what do you put that in and then you put the rest in? You had to add one. So I have one of pieces. You had to add one? Is that, yeah. what, you, is that what you're saying? Because we added some frame rails. So this is the new one. We had to do some measuring. This one was here. Because it had the carrier bearing, but we extended the drive shaft, so we extended the second one. So I actually moved this back 20 inches and then put one in its place. One has to be here because the fuel tanks are here. Mm. You want, otherwise your fuel tanks start doing this and stressing the frame, so you want to make sure it's held tight. So you just had to add so the extra? These may be close, but we have to have them here to make that, this work. So. Makes sense. And you kept that one because it's got the it's bracket. going to hold the carrier bearing. And then there's one under there that's going to hold the carrier bearing. And then this one and this one are just, just here for support. So it looks like we got a lot, but there wasn't anything I could do because of the way the drive shafts are. Instead of like making all new drive shafts, we actually had two of them extended. Okay. So. So we didn't actually make any new drive shafts then? No. No. Just, just extended. Just them. extended them. It's, it cool. saves the customer a little money. I mean, but we took everyone out. It took them to, um, well, we use JM Driveline. It's out of Wisconsin by us. Good friend of mine. And uh, he wanted everything because he can balance everything. That way everything, like, if you only take two in and there's a few that maybe are out of balance, that's going to make them all fight each other. You don't want that. Makes sense. So we took every drive shaft out of it. Everyone got balanced. Everyone got reworked. New U joints. If the slip joints were sloppy, I mean, they all seem good, but I told them whatever it needs, it gets. Well, you might as well, it's there. we do things, so. Yeah. So yeah, we gotta go get them. And uh, actually we're sending, we're, send, we're sending one of our retired assistants for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank gosh for parents, right? Yeah. If yeah. it's not one side, it's the other side helping us run. So rather than tightening everything up in the front, I want to get all these cross members in and make sure these are not offset. Square. How's it I look so far? Sure these are straight before I do anything up there. And is it looking good so far? Yeah. You drilled your holes? Well, I mean, this one was put on top of this one or whatever it was. Vice versa, they were all yeah. drilled exact, so I don't know how it could be off, but... You I mean, might have been happened. you might have been drinking that day. You never know. The odds are pretty good. <laughs> so, so we want to get these two rails sit in here perfectly square before we do anything up there. We're, we may have some adjustments up there. That's easy, but and you're saying up by the engine. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I've seen a lot of wreck trucks where you know a frame rail gets hit in the front and it gets pushed back. A half inch. The truck will never drive the same. So you got to make sure these start square. Otherwise, it's just going to drive goofy. And we don't want that. It's yeah. Just uh, it's time consuming. Part of it. We're getting it. So cool of that we're getting rain finally. Uh, I don't think it's enough to count so no. far. Okay. But hey, we we're old now. We have a rain gauge, so we're going to be able to tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. So anyways, well, yeah, let's get the cross members in and we'll make sure the thing is sitting square first before we get too far into front end stuff. Because then if it's square back here, it's going to be good back or good up there. And then, you know, easier to align, obviously, and all that. We've got to get into axle pieces and alignments and all that because it does have to go to the alignment shop. But uh, I always set that up for our alignment guy, you know, so it's less thing he has to do, but you cool. know, they gotta be in your square too. So, yeah. and then he'll just tweak from there, do a science, whatever, yeah. but at least we can get him in here straight. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. Well, good deal. I'll let you get back after it. Cause that looks like a lot of fun you got laying there. 
Well, that's nothing. I mean, I don't know what half of it is, but oh. yeah, I do. I've been around. If it was a 389, it'd be a lot easier. Now, I've, I haven't worked on a 379 in years, so. Mm -hmm. A little rusty? A little rusty. Yeah. But 389 right. would be easier, but uh, we'll get her. Like all these lines, you go down your brake chambers, obviously, and mm -hmm. then we're all getting replaced. Then we'll all be new. Uh, a lot of these lines will be gone through. Was your parts assistant supposed to be ordering that stuff? Some of the valves. I don't know. We haven't got that far yet. Okay. This is just. Well, I was gonna say because I d I didn't get that memo, so I didn't no. do it. We're we're going through and, and like okay, I don't I I don't know what that is and there's this wire you know that's cut apart. I don't know what this is, but we're gonna chase that back and if we don't need it, we're taking it out. We don't, you know, it, it, stuff like that bothers me. So if it has to be hooked <laughs> up to something, it's gonna get ran new. It's not gonna get left like that that's not really the way i do things but this, i don't know what this is for if this is like reverse light or something it's in the this main deal here and that goes to your tail lights so this is a light of some sort because yellow and white are lights well i guess one never one will find out right yeah. Yeah, but all these are color coded. Like, this will be a. I think this is a power divider. This is all air right, like leveling valve stuff. This is a supply line for your brake signal. Like, they're all colored for a reason, and them, them are all pretty much the same as far as old versus new. 379, 389. You know, if you look behind your dash, these are all color coded the same exact way. So they'll tell you what they are. Just follow to the switch and. Yeah, usually this is power divider and yeah, hmm. all that. This one of these is a dump, one's uh goes to your suspension gauge on your dash. This one's your brake signal, I believe. I'd have to double check. Yeah. Well I'll let you get after it. Is this orange? No, this is black. Yeah, then add paint and it's even harder to figure out. That's orange. I don't we'll figure it out. All right, good luck. Yep. So I was told I had to come out here and film you. Yeah. Everybody see Chad Berry. <laughs> so we're at the point on the frame where I have the motor mounts in, all the, the cross members up to the back of the sleeper are in. Let's check it out. Um, to support the frame, so. <clears throat> Cap mounts are on, all that. But now, if you come over here, oh. where we started before you squirreled, <laughs> there's all these suspension brackets. Like we, we need this. We're gonna replace these. Uh, if you look and see this right here, like all this rubber is just shot. So what do you call these? Because this is always a discussion in my world. Torque arms. Torque or arms? Pan hard bars. Or pan hard bars. Whatever. Or yeah, there's all kinds Torque of Torque arms go here. The pan hard bars go crisscross in the frame rails from the rear end of the frame rails. Okay. So anyways. D anyways, squirrel. So most of these bolts are loose when Hunter took them out. They were tight. Oh, and they're broke. So we gotta work on getting them out. This one's loose, them are loose, them are loose. But these two are tight. Also, we have to take these off. So it's going to be corroded inside of here, mainly in, in the here. If you see this, see the see the oh, yeah, nice. corrosion popping out. So those are going to be hard, hard to get off. So what we got to do, I got, got it in the vice here. This one's broke off too, so we got to get that out. But first, I want to get these off. There you can see, that looks good, but you get around to here and they're all cracked, the rubber bushing part. So we're gonna loosen these up and we're gonna heat it right here. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna turn on this part of the bolt with an impact, so it's gonna okay. get loud. So we're gonna turn on that after we heat this and that should come out. 
you'll see a bunch of white powder come flying out, but we want to save these bolts because these bolts are kind of expensive. Oh. Yeah. Hey, I got a quote on all that. It's sitting on my desk. I forgot to tell you. Of course you did. <laughs> but seriously, I did. I We got to look at that. Anyways. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to get these bolts out. It's in, in these two. I've had to take this whole assembly once in a while to a machine shop, but we're going to try and get them out ourselves first. Okay. Well, let's do it to air it. air chisel or whatever, but... Um, this is just the nature of a Flex Air suspension or a Kenworth AG380. They're both the same. They've got the horseshoe looking leaf spring. This happens. So when you're stretching frames and stuff, if it's got this suspension, be ready for some work. It's just extra work. But now's the time. We're going to get all these prepped. We're actually going to take them in and get them powder coated. Because like this corrosion and stuff in between the frame rails, and this piece, we want to stop that. And actually, powder coating is a little bit stronger, a little bit more durable. But don't worry. Once we get it all put back together, we can scuff this all and paint right over the powder coat. So we should be good. Okay. So all them little brackets and stuff, we're taking to powder coat. When we get all them ready, we'll just show that. Okay. All right. Is that hot? Don't touch them. Them shimmy shims? Them shimmy shims for alignment are probably a little warm. Yeah. I, I don't don't give my bare feet. See how see how I heated that up and you know. Yeah, because it wasn't moving when you did it before. But well, what happens it. is right here when you heat it here, heat makes everything expand. So if you heat it here, that kind of makes that hole expand and then it makes it easier for that bolt to turn but if you look closely you see all that white powder stuff that come out that's all, corrosion, that's all that it? corrosion or we, we what do we call it um ah there's a word when you put steel and and aluminum together corrosion so, or le electrolysis that's what they Ooh, call it big, electrolysis listen to you big fancy so now we have to get that out. So I'm gonna spend a little time and figure out we've gotta heat it. Okay, come over here and I'll show you. So this bolt, this is this bolt that's broke off right here. We're gonna to have to heat it here and heat it here. 
because obviously this part's open. That'll come out then. Will that we wreck just the bracket get this then to, when you heat it? What? Will that wreck the bracket? No, this is aluminum. This will take a little bit of heat. So it's going to get loud again, but. So if we heat this here. area all we're doing is warming it we're not we're not heat treating it we're not doing anything in particular other than just warming it up we're not melting it we're not doing any of that but you want to heat this part not the bolt if you heat the bolt the bolt's going to get hot and then when that gets hot that's going to be bigger you want the piece to kind of be bigger. What do you think? Yeah. Should we try it? Yeah. Get my new gloves. You need an extender. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Do I have a hammer? Yeah, got one. Oh, good Lord, that might be a little overkill. <laughs> Why do you sound like you're getting winded? You can't do it! If I had a longer bit. Great. Can you put that piece through there and then hammer on that? With your tool? Huh? Well, I thought about cutting it off. That sounds... Can I send it back the other way, you know? Well. So if we cut that off flush, we can shove it back through. It's a lot less work. Yep. It's going to be sparks. I'm going to shut my eyes. Just like our marriage, you know, sparks. Oh, so many for You know, I don't have proper shoes on for this. Sorry. There we go. Huh. There's a hole all the way through it, see? Let me see. See? Push it right in your face. <laughs> so that one's ready. Now you just got to do that three more times. Oh, sorry. Oh. Sorry to hear that. But most people get scared. All you, all you need is a little heat. A little heat and a big hammer. <laughs> this one, we got two of them. Whatever. But you see, uh, they're actually open. 
you know, so it's not solid. So if you heat that up like we did the last one, it'll push this right through. And then this, this one right here is actually open inside of there. It's hard to see, but once we get this off, we'll be able to see. Okay. But we got to go ahead and get all them out and then we can get them ready. Okay. So, so another thing I was going to show you is the last one we didn't have that case because it was broke off on the outside. But this side we could actually put this on and get this turning. So all we got to do is heat it here and here and we should be able to turn that right out. Same with this one. We might be able to save this bolt. Oof. This one broke, obviously. But this one looks, the other one looks we, broke we, too. We just put an impact on it and give it a little heat. We'll get it turning. I think we can get it out without... I mean, obviously, like I said, that bolt needs to be replaced, but we could probably save this one. So okay. just clean them up with the wire wheel. and. You know, this is something we should have mentioned, too, that with these trucks, keep an eye on these bolts because when I ran the repair shop, we had a lot mm -hmm. of them come in where they were loose. They'll break. Yeah, that's very common. Yep. So food for yep. thought. All right. Hey. So we have everything loaded up. These are the hangers that we took the, the arms off of and got the bolts out. Fuel tank brackets, uh, this back cross member, the air ride plates. These are the pan hard bar mounts, shock mounts. We're doing, uh, these are the battery box brackets, step brackets. We're doing over there. Those are the sleeper mount, shock mount, slash airbag mount brackets. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of stuff here, so we're just going to get them all powder coated. Uh, going to be a lot stronger, better surface to start with. If you see, I'll show you on this piece a little bit. See all this corrosion? We're going to sandblast that all off. And that powder coat's a lot thicker than paint, so... I'm hoping that'll hold up better. Should give him uh, years and years and years of no corrosion, hopefully. So how we're doing it. That's all we need. And then we have, because why would we not measure these in millimeters instead of inches when I was just trying to order them? So what Chad's got is all the bolts for the... Um, putting the axles on. Is the pizza ready? Yeah, the pizza's done. Okay. Um, so we're putting the suspension hangers on that you not, thought you'd never see the day. So we've got these powder coated, you know, just because like all that needs to be cleaned up. So what we've got is we got a steel bolt that has all that corrosion, see? Mm -hmm. Now we don't want to just go sticking that back in there, so. What we do is put that is, off to the side. We don't order new ones unless you absolutely have to because the long ones are like $40 a piece. Well, from Peterbilt. Well, from yeah. Peterbilt, yeah. Yeah. But uh, we ordered new nuts because they're lock nuts. And, yes. And I just, I feel safer with suspension parts. We put new nuts on. <laughs> so what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you guys a little trick. It's not even a trick. It's more common sense. You can... And I see this, I, you know, I, we cleaned all these up, you know, took the, this crap off, the white electrolysis is what they call it. We cleaned them up on the bench grinder, you know, with wire wheel. You did such a nice job. I did. Cleaned the heads up. How did it go when you went and got the bench grinder yesterday? We were talking about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, shut up. Sorry guys, just gotta throw it in there. Chad went to get the bench grinder from his storage shed and found a snake. It was priceless. <laughs> so instead of anti <laughs> we're not getting off subject. We're gonna use grease. 
and you want to use a good grease because it's cheaper to use grease than it is anti-seize. And quite frankly, I think anti-seize dries out after time and it just turns to the same white powder. So anywho, everybody knows. Oh, take number two. Yeah, sorry, I had okay. to stop. I had phone a phone calls. call. Some okay. of us have to work too. So we have our nice brand new looking bracket that we have powder coated. We have a nice brand new looking frame that we painted before we put this on. So we, we did everything we possibly could. Sandblasted, epoxy primed and painted. So when we put all this together, we should have no corrosion for years. So in order to fix this, like I said, grease, you want to use very good grease. Um, reason being, the cheap stuff doesn't completely waterproof it. So uh, what we're going to do, I, I kind of need three hands here. Do you want me to do something? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just, I'll do it. So, okay. So we just want a thin layer all the way around. What are what you using does, for grease? I'm getting that. Just oh. hold on. Oh. No, we don't want an overabundance because all it does is squish out and makes a mess. And but we want it, you know, just just nice. Get it on a few of the threads, but you don't want grease on the threads that are going to actually lock in, because then your lock nut will back back out. Don't want that. So at that point, that one's ready to go. We can shove her in. You know what I mean? Right there. Like that. Oh, the golf cart's going to be all full of grease. That's fine. It's a workshop bench cart. <laughs> so this is the grease we use. 357 Magnum. And it's got a liquid molly in it, not a powder molly. Am I saying it right? Yes, you are. And it's primrose. I'm testing them right now because truthfully. Yeah. But it is, you're correct. It is a liquid molly grease. It is what we use in all of our trucks also. But So basically, and we had a good testament. Mandy's truck I greased yesterday, day before, something like that. <laughs> and uh, 20,000 miles on a grease, which, you know, whatever. Okay, but we use good grease. Not, uh, not to say that you should grease your truck every 20,000 miles, but it just got overlooked, no big deal. But when, actually, when I greased the U-joints, there was no moisture that came out. That tells me this grease is pretty good grease. She so, knew that. That's why she yeah, did that. Yeah, okay. So usually it's usually fine. you see that brown, milky stuff coming out. That's water. You don't want water to mix with grease. So that tells me in 20,000 miles, there was no water mixing with grease, even at, at that kind of grease interval. But mm -hmm. Like I said, use good grease. You can do the same thing as anti-seas, but just... Go through and, and just grease the bolts and you're good. That'll stay protected for years and years and years and years. We're, we're doing this right. So now I'm going ahead and I'm just, just doing bolt by bolt. Yeah. Waiting for well, the nuts. Well, you'll be Wait there a while. So. The bolts in and, and uh, roll the nuts by the time we need them. Okay. All right. Assembly started. Mm -hmm. Bolts are, bolts is, bolt, 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 bolts got grease on them so yeah. sorry my tongue is tired anywho that's it's going back together pretty easily we're uh cleaning things up getting getting it put back together yeah yep. just axles in the near future take your time it, it takes time to do it right so just take your time <laughs> don't take your time get it done well yeah <laughs> we, we got to get it done too so <sighs> there's that but I get a rope and just start pulling. Yeah. <laughs> on top of 8 million other things we got going I know, on. I know. So, anyways, you guys are sick of hearing us vent about that. Yep. Um, a short, sweet video, but kind of where we're at. And mm -hmm. they'll, we'll just continue on. We'll get this thing done yet. Yeah. Yeah. Sooner than later. Right? Yeah. All right. Well, you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe. And, uh. Keep watching. We'll get there. Someday this thing will roll out of the shop. Someday. Someday. All right. All right. See ya.